women. We civilized men. Or at least we try. There can be no gentlemen without ladies. We find an exemplar of this civilizing effect in the love affair between Sam Houston and his wife, Margaret Lee. When we think of Margaret, we think of the pious woman with the pleasing countenance who tamed the hard-drinking, foul-mouthed, bull-headed hero of San Jacinto. Warm, loving letters between the two certainly give us that impression. And by all accounts, that's what Margaret was, a gentle, civilizing influence that calmed Sam Houston down. But then there was that one time that patient, pious Margaret Houston was tried for assault and battery. This is the story. In 1839, Sam Houston proposed to his second wife. His second wife on paper, anyway. It's complicated. The third woman he would call his wife. The same summer in Galveston, yellow fever swept the island. Among the dead was the mother of little Susan Virginia Thorne, a girl of just five years old. Her stepfather, whose other kids were boys, thought the child would be best served with two parents. So in 1842, she went to live with Vernal Lee and his wife. Tragedy struck again in 1845 when Lee's wife died, leaving the young girl motherless again. So Vernal sent the girl to be with the maternal figures he loved best, his own mother, Nancy Lee, and her daughter, Margaret Lee Houston. In early 1850, as Sam Houston was writing home about a shiny new copybook for Virginia to practice her writing in, Margaret was penning her own missive with news of the girl who had just turned 15. On January 27, 1850, Margaret wrote to her husband Sam that Virginia Thorne had run off with their overseer, Mr. Thomas Gott, a man 15 years older than Virginia. He was pushing 30. Wrote Margaret, quote, I supposed she would marry him, but today I learn he has taken her over to Cincinnati, that'd be Cincinnati, Texas, to go to school to Miss Rankin's one session, and then they are going to marry. I was totally unprepared for it. Indeed, she had seemed happier and more cheerful for the last few weeks, and I thought we were getting along finely. But I can now find from various sources that I was nursing a viper. Two months later, Gott sued Margaret's mother, Nancy Lee, for guardianship of young Virginia. He also sued for money he said was owed Virginia for work she had done in the Houston household. All of this caused poor Margaret much distress. She was quite pregnant with her fourth child, about ready to burst, and her husband was ensconced in Washington, D.C., tending to senatorial matters. But for poor Margaret, the worst was yet to come. On September 28, 1850, Margaret Lee Houston was indicted in Walker County for assault and battery upon Virginia Thorne. Now, as most of you probably know, you can indict a ham sandwich. An indictment is merely a formal charge. It's certainly not a verdict. But for the religious wife of a sitting senator and the former president of the Republic of Texas, oh, it was an ordeal. A big, hairy, unpleasant ordeal. From Washington, Houston dispatched his dear friend, the lawyer and early Texas historian Henderson Yoakum to Margaret's aid. Yoakum provided moral support and would represent Margaret in the trial and trials to come. The affair wore on, as legal matters do, and the trial date was moved deeper into 1851. Sam returned to Huntsville in the summer of 1851, and depositions were taken for Margaret's assault trial in July. Here's how it all played out. Virginia Thorne testified that she had been upstairs in the Houston home about bedtime one night in the fall of 1849. She was dressing six-year-old Sam Jr. for bed. Margaret, she said, came upstairs and called for her to bring in Sammy. As Virginia led the child to his mother, Sammy began to cry. According to Virginia, Margaret absolutely lost it when Sammy cried and yelled, Don't you hurt my child! Virginia said, um, I'm not hurting him. At which point, Margaret slapped the snot out of her. Virginia pleaded with Margaret not to kill her. And then Margaret took the cowhide to her, giving her about 20 lashes. Virginia also testified that Mr. Gott, her husband by the time of the trial, had initiated the charges and had told her just a couple of days ago that she would have to go before the grand jury. Mr. Gott and others testified that Virginia had shown him a bruise on her arm and named Mrs. Houston as the culprit. Gott further testified that he'd witnessed Margaret say to Virginia the, following, the day following the alleged assault that she still had the cowhide 
and she wasn't afraid to use it. Most witnesses describe Margaret's mode of family governance as mild and forbearing. Folks close to the Houston household testified to hearing quite a different version of the story from young Virginia. The alternative version went a little something like this. Upstairs at the Houston home, Sammy refused to go to sleep and he was crying. Margaret called for Virginia to bring the crying boy to his mama. Frustrated by this request, Virginia yanked the boy off the bed and Sammy wailed even louder. So Margaret punished Virginia for being rough with the boy. Many testified that Virginia was a problem child, some attributing her unruly behavior to her being an orphan. Sam Houston, for his part, testified that she was obstinate, often went without shoes, and was careless in her dress. He further testified that he'd suggested to Margaret on numerous occasions that Virginia should be sent to live with her own relatives. When the trial was over, the jury split and they remained deadlocked. A mistrial was declared on September 30th, 1851. The matter was then taken up by Margaret's church, the same Baptist church she had helped found, and the one where she took Virginia to Sunday school. They investigated and concluded there was no need to take any action against Mrs. Houston. Now, right before the trial started, a Walker County judge had thrown out the lawsuit that Thomas Gott filed against Nancy Lee, seeking money for Virginia. Now, in September 1851, the criminal charges against Margaret are dropped. Toward the end of 1851, Sam was hearing rumors that Thomas Gott's brother planned to sue Margaret, but nothing came of it. Finally, the storm had passed, and Mrs. Houston felt free. Susan Virginia Thorne married Thomas Gott, as I said, shortly before the trial began. The couple had five kids and raised them in Montgomery County, moving out to Rosebud around 1870. Gott worked as a carpenter and never owned much in the way of property. He died in 1872, his child bride outliving him by four decades, dying in 1912 at the ripe old age of 77. Sam Houston believed the case against his wife was instigated by his political foes, but I think that was just Houston being Houston. It may have been that Gott was motivated by money instead. While Gott was suing for cash, he claimed Mrs. Lee and Mrs. Houston owned his wife. He was also attempting to recover money from the estate of Virginia's mother, who'd been dead for a decade. Writing of Thomas Gott, his former overseer, who had caused his wife so much grief and embarrassment, Sam opined unabashedly, he is a very dog. And that's the story of the time Margaret Lee Houston was accused of assault in 1850. And I want to know what you think. Was Thomas Gott just helping a young orphan recover what he believed was rightly hers? Or do you think he was a no-account hustler trying to use an orphan to turn a buck? Do you think Margaret was rightly accused? Was it a political ploy against Sam Houston? Tell me what you think down in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to the Texas History Trust YouTube channel. And you'll be notified when we upload more snapshots of Texas history. Until next time, God in Texas, y'all.